Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to create an enemy AI that can chase us and attack us and apply damage. So I've provided an animation below which is going to be an attack animation and you can use your own but I'm just going to rename this attack animation and I'm going to create an anim montage of this and this will allow me to call this animation outside of the anim blueprint and I can just set values like the speed or the length of it or the playback so to start let's first find our blueprint for our character third person character so I'm just going to duplicate this, this is the default menu so I'm going to just rename this BP enemy AI so let's open this up and we can get rid of all this code since it's not going to be controlled by a player and let's head on over to our viewport and we don't need a camera since our AI uses something called pawn sensing so let's get pawn sensing and you can see that it has a green radius indicating it's got 90 degrees of field of view so that means it can see from 90 degrees onwards of its head so I'm just going to make that a bit more realistic to something like 60 degrees cool so once we've got that done you can see it has a few events so we want the enemy to chase us when it sees us so on C pawn so let's get this event and what we want is first to check if the pawn we see is our player so let's first just get a reference to our character so on begin play so when we start the level let's just be aware of our third person character so let's cast your third person character and its object is is its context so we want to get player pawn so we have a nice node that just returns the player controller and then we can promote this to a variable its output pin so this will be as third person character so this variable is going to contain all the information about our third person character and we can use that variable to then access specific things or tell blueprints that you should chase this so what we're going to do is let's just cast to third person character so the reason we cast again is we want to check if the pawn that we see is matching to the third person character so it's object and it's pawn it's going to connect those two and we're going to check if the pawn seen is the third person character and if it is then we'll pass on from here and if it isn't then you can return print player not found but for now let's just get a node called AI move to and let's just have our target act as this actually we can get rid of this since we can get all our information from here and um, actually let's just keep that there so our pawn is just going to be itself because the AI move to that is going to move to the target is going to be itself so this BP enemy AI the destination can be just left out because it's just going to constantly chase the player so let's just then have a way for the AI to attack so let's first just get sphere collision and parent it to the mesh so this is just basically going to check if the player is in this bounds so close enough to attack so I'd say this is pretty good size um, let's set its collision presets to custom so we want to only ignore all of these and only overlap on a pawn so a player we don't want it to check on any of the rest of these so we'll call this close radius and let's then create another one we'll get sphere collision and you can tell now the parent socket to be hand R so we want it to just be binded to the hand R because this is the hand is going to hit up, hit the player with we're just going to make this a bit smaller I'd say 0.5 is good 
and we'll call this attack sphere. So, firstly, what we want to do is let's just on component begin overlap. Let's cast to the player again. So, if the pawn overlapping casted to the third person character returns true, that means it's the player, and then we can then play montage and its mesh is going to be the character mesh montage to play is the attack and then montage and make sure the montage you select has the correct slot so default slot should be fine but what's going to happen now is each time we overlap it's going to call this and we only want to play the montage once it's finished so let's just get a do once and it will do this only once until we complete the montage so it can reset the do once once we finish the montage so that way it's nice and smooth and it doesn't have repeating animations while it's currently attacking so that's nice it will play the animation but it won't actually add, add damage so what we want to do is I'm going to create a variable called this attacking and we're going to set this true once it starts playing and we're going to set it false once it stops playing so let's just put that like that that looks a bit funky so I'm going to unselect that and that should be alright Or it should okay. It should be it should be like this. It's a little bit confusing. Okay, so plug that in like that. Um, let's just have it like that. Okay, cool. So now once we've got this information that if we're attacking or we're not, we can then check if we're able to apply damage. So. What we want to do is, on our attack sphere, let's check if we are within the, or we're overlapping his hand attack sphere. And if we are, let's check if attacking is true. And if it is true, let's apply damage. The damaged actor is going to be our third person character. Or we can just use um, as BP third person character the damage cause itself, and let's put the damage to like fifty. So now that we've done that, let's go to our third person character, and let me just delete this. So once you've applied damage we need to go into our main character that's going to be attacked and we'll get an event called any damage so this any damage will fire because we've applied damage here so we'll automatically pick up and we'll get a subtract so what we want to do is subtract our damage from our health so just create a new variable float of 100 or whatever you want the health to be and make sure it's float so what we're going to do is subtract damage from our health and you make sure it's in order, this order so health at the top, damage at the bottom because we want it to be 100 minus 50 which is our damage and then set that return value of this calculation as your health and then once we do that we want to check if health is less than or equal to 0 and if it is that means our play should be dead so let's just call destroy actor so it should take two hits to kill the player so now once we've got that we can then test this out and before you start you have to make sure you implement a nav mesh bounds volume so I'll delete mine and show you how to get that you go to volumes nav mesh bounds volume and this just means where the AI is able to walk. So once you've dragged this in, if you hit P and scale this up a bit, 
you can now see this green area which shows you the where the AI is able to traverse so let me just make it a bit bigger and without this your AI won't be able to chase you so now let's just drag in our enemy AI and we'll put them if in front of us a little bit so we can showcase the on C port let's play so now if I go in front of him he should chase me let me stop and he can attack me and you can tell there we go so that's how enemy AI implemented if you have any problems or troubles just join the discord below or ask in the comment section thanks for watching